Well, you, I'm ready when you are. That's my last name, I'm ready. All righty. So let's get started. And I want to first thank you for the opportunity to be here with us one more time after already done a few different interviews and long ones too. Uh, so you, the other day you were talking about uh, the masters, the old masters, and how kind of sad that they did not got interviews or they did not got homage uh, from people while they were alive. And I think interviewing someone like you, it's like making an homage to you and trying to learn from you and try to pass your knowledge to other people as well. So I would like you to take this interview as an homage and as something that we do out of respect and out of this hunger we have for capoeira and the knowledge from the past. So thank you for being here with us today. And I hope we can bring a lot of that knowledge and feeling you have to everybody else that's watching too. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really, uh, I'm really privileged for being here, but also it's, it's really important. Most of the, I don't know how many live has been done in English. And I'm so happy that you suggest to do this in English. So, you know, it's fair enough. So the, all these students that don't speak Portuguese can know a little bit about my, my life in Capoeira, how I started and uh, what, how I really feel about Capoeira. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, you know, Messi. Pretty much, uh, I don't know, this is, take advantage of this situation you now we that's the best thing to do and this is given the opportunity for a lot of people to discover their talent as an interviewer <laughs> well i hope i found my talent <laughs> that i hope well you're done you're done already you know you are i love <laughs> all the organs how organized you are with all the questions and uh, how you're going to proceed this it's uh, really impressed, very impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Mess. So I'm going to explain people how uh, did I organize the interview so they can follow up with us. So what I did is try to organize Mess's uh, life in the way I see in about six different phases. Yeah. One is before Capoeira, who was him and how he ended up approaching Capoeira. The second one it's the capoeira learning process until the moment that he left Brazil, which I call the learning years. Uh, I think he kept learning up to today, but I'm going to call that period the learning years. And then his experience outside of Brazil, which I like to call the journey, how it was, this process. Uh, I took a fourth part to talk about the dance and the experience as a choreographer and the influence this has in capoeira back and forward. And the fifth part is for him to talk about Capoeira Luanda, the formation of Capoeira Luanda, the need to create that, and his expectations for it. And for last, we're going to talk about tomorrow. What are the plans for the future and how he sees uh, some of this future in Capoeira? So moving on to our first part, we have the before Capoeira times. Messi, what can you talk about? Uh, to us about how was before you started Capoeira, who were you, who was Jelon Vieira, the kid? Okay, first of all, I just want to say, wow, I can't believe you, uh, my niece, Dela is here too, I can't believe my family, how they find out that I'm here. Uh, Instagram. Uh, hmm? And Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Valeu, mess well, that. You know, um, my memories about how I start capoeira. I f always say I was looking for capoeira and capoeira was looking for me. At nine months, my, we used, I used to live in a sugarcane factory and my brother and sister fighting over something they ended up letting me fall i fell from a very high uh table it's something very important for me if you ever come you've been to my house you know i have this long table 
Mm-hmm. My mother used to have a table. I used to sit about 14 to 16 people, if I can re- recall, if I remember. Table is really important for family. You know, mm-hmm. the, on table you solve so many things. You meet. You have family. It's a gathering place. And uh, I have memories of this table fighting. This table, uh, yes, Manu, was run. Okay, go tell your father. I'm sorry, guys. Manu had something to tell me in private. (laughs) Uh, I was on a table and they were fighting. This table has, I have great memories, even when I was a baby to when I, to seven years old, when I lost my father. We used to play on this table. We used to do a homework and table. We used to eat on that table. That table was really long and was big. And heavy, I remember people coming. My dad used to, uh, my mother used to ask, uh, used to ask some of the workers to come and move the table so my mother could clean the house. That's how big and heavy the table was. And wow. I fell from that table and I fractured, I fractured my both femur. And mm-hmm. uh, my mother took to the doctor, they put a cast, and doctors always saying to my mother he's not going to ever walk again but my mother is so spiritual and they she insisted insisted took me to many spiritual um what do you call to many spiritual healers healers healing he, no she done all this on her own you know finally one day she used to wake me up before the sunrise and one one day i woke her up and she was really surprised I was already over three years old. And uh, um, she took me to the doctor who said I would never walk again. And he said, well, buy him a ball, make sure he runs over the, uh, run, plays the ball, so he strengthen. That was the physiotherapy of that time. And uh, he said, make sure your, his leg, he runs, plays the ball so the leg gets strong again. And uh, I remember also my mother always used to tell me the story, say, make sure he climbed the stairs, that will really strengthen his quadriceps. I say, oh, great. My mother said, oh, great, great. But I was not interested in playing soccer. I was interested in doing cartwheel, walking my hands, flipping. I got in trouble many times with my mother because she used to ask me, well, she used to go out. My brother used to help me bring her mattress to the living room. And they used to flip on the mattress. And one day we got caught and we all got in trouble. <laughs> and um, finally I learned how to walk on my hands. How old was your brother than you? How much older my was your brother? My older brother, he was probably maybe six or seven years older than me. I'm the, I come from a family of eight. Uh, here's Zeka. Zeka is my dog. It's Zeka, go, come on. Uh, I was, he's about, he was the oldest. He was the first. Mm-hmm. I came from a family of eight. Mm-hmm. And I'm the fourth one. I'm right in the middle. And when I learned how to walk on my hand, my brother used to get, choke me off to his friends saying, well, he can walk on his hand on stairs, up the stairs. And uh, his <laughs> friends say, I doubt it. I can't believe this. Then they'll bet my brother make money. When I walk coming down on stairs, he even made more money. But I never seen a penny from this money. You know, <laughs> he always talks about, he always, even after I grew up, he always buy, buy, uh, bribe about how much money he made on me. <laughs> But I didn't get to really see capoeira until I was 10 years old. When I saw capoeira, I said to someone, I know how to do that. But actually, I didn't. I didn't even know what. Because I flip, because uh, I walk on my hands. You know, I didn't even know. And first time I saw Hoda was once, I remember today was a Saturday. I was going to get a haircut because we my brother and i we all used to was supposed to go to my brother and i used, we all supposed to go to, to see the circus 
and I ran into the capoeira hall and I stayed there. I stayed there for probably what? Uh, maybe four hours or more until someone said the whole neighborhood is waiting, is looking for you. At that time, the whole neighborhood will help raise a child. Nowadays, that no longer happen anymore. You know, <laughs> you do something here, by the time you get to the house, your mom has already knew it, you're in trouble. You're in deep, deep, deep trouble. And sometimes my friend's mother used to punish me just the way she punished her kids. And my mother would do the same thing with the other kids in the neighborhood. You know, it was a better mm -hmm. sense of community than what we have nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, I said, I want to learn that. You know, I run into Mr. Menito's kids and I finally met Mr. Menito. Uh, Mr. Menito was a great beating ball player, was a great singer. But his kid started coming to my mom's house. And I said, no, no, no. My mother said, no, it's not. A, I don't want you to learn this. Capoeira is not good for you, blah, blah, blah. Because this is what the society used to say. You know, up, even up to today, whatever is black, anything that's black is bad. Doesn't matter. Anything that's black is bad. In which and year I, was that, Master? I'm talking about 62, 63, 1962, 63. I started a lot of discrimination. 63, yes. I managed to do capoeira hiding in with Mesomerit, but finally, the more I got into capoeira, the more his kids started coming to my house, and my mother put a stop to it. I don't want those kids here anymore. I don't want them to bring that instrument. I run into the guy who called me the attention the most. His name was uh, Carlinhos. And he was dating this American girl, this American lady actually, at that time. And this was dictator, right in the beginning of dictatorship. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, this was a program that's called Alliance for the Progress. People mm -hmm. my age, probably you know it's Alliance for the Progress. Alliance for the Progress was an organization created by the American government. It was created by uh, not just the American government, but the CIA. The CIA. They used to have, when I came to this country, I got, I learned what the purpose of Alliance for the Progress went to Brazil for, but also was another uh, organization that they are really focused and uh, expert in air condition. Because at, at that time, only country that knew about air condition was the United States. And they got this, uh, this two organization going around the world, inspire who was going to be communist, who was not going to be communist. And Brazil was right on the edge to become communist. Mm. And what happened? Brazil went to uh, where they infiltrated right in the poor neighborhood because supposed to be a uh, uh, terrorist. Mm -hmm. He used to really come from the streets, come from the Can you hear me, Ness? Uh, now I hear you. But you okay, you're I'm back. Frozen. Sorry. I lost you for a minute. I did a negativa for a minute, but I'm back up with Hulia. I think it, you took a half <laughs> <laughs> Uh How far did you hear me? You were explaining about uh, how the CIA was involved and you found out that in the USA. Yeah. Well, I didn't find out until 75, until I came to this country, what mm -hmm. the Alliance for the Progress was really, the objective of Alliance for the Progress was formed by the CIA. 
CIA, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, mm -hmm. one day walking, going into the house, not into the house, but through the back back door, the back gate, I heard some voice. And uh, I went up on the window and I look up and I see a lot of radio. And this guy was talking on the radio and he saw me watching. And he kicked me and Carlinhos out of the house. And he said, I, you guys will never come back here again. And Carlinhos mm. was so pissed off with me. He was so upset. He said, I don't want, I don't want to teach Capri to you anyway. And I say, well, you're not. I remember very well, I was only 10 years old. I say, I don't care because you don't, because actually what he did, he used to be with his girlfriend and he got a chair and got me just kicking over the chair, kicking over the chair for maybe one hour or so. You know, and I was, being, I was 10 years old, I was working, I was making Christmas trees to sell so I have money to pay for my capoeira class. That's how much right. I really want. Because I couldn't ask my mother. This guy would not teach me for free. He wants to get paid. And I say, okay, Mr. Merito never charged. But one day, walking to see a year later, walking to watch a game, a soccer, a soccer match. And I heard mm. a, a bidding bow. And from this bidding bow, I told my brother and friend, I said, no, no, I got to go see where this is coming from. They continue going to the soccer game. And I went looking for the sound. And I even made a uh, ladainha uh, to honor Mr. Bobo. And uh, looking for this beating about sounds, when I got there, who's there? Mr. Bobo, I asked him his name. And um, uh, he was very nice. He was very friendly. And he told me, well, you cannot join my class unless your mom comes to talk to me. Yeesh. I said, oh, no. Then I stay there talking to him, even after the game, because he didn't have a class that day. I remember very well. It was a couple of people that started playing music because it was the most important match between Bahia and Vitória. It's two games that it stops the state. When mm. Bahia and Vitória game is like, when Bahia and Vitória plays, it's like the Brazilian team, national Brazilian team plays. It stops the country. And Bahia and Vitória, it stops the whole state. And no one went to class, but few people was there playing music. And I was there for maybe over two hours. My brothers got home and my mother was, was worried, where was I? When I realized the game was over, I ran to the house. It was not too far, but I was not on my way of my mom's... Uh, my mother's way because it was mm -hmm. down the hill i went home and i told her oh, no i was just playing soccer because every time i tell her i was playing soccer she gets happy zeka get out of here ben jesus uh every time i play soccer she was very happy because she wants me to get my leg strong and i really i was the worst soccer player ever you know mm -hmm. i never i really didn't know how to play soccer. lucky for us yeah and like for me too. But uh, anyway, I finally started training with Matt Bobo and uh, every day, maybe for a year, he was always saying, where's your mother? Your mother must come here, otherwise you're not going to take class anymore. <laughs> and uh, he never got to meet my mother until I was an adult. Wow. But when I was 15, I also was a boy scout and I met Master Ezekiel, Camisa Rocha, the, one of the greatest capoeirista, he's no longer with us. Uh, on New Year's, Caradelli messed up one, somebody else I don't remember. Demonstrating in this, in this uh, I was camping with the Boy Scout in the sugar cane a factory called Itapetingui. Itapetingui. Mm. And uh, I saw a different capoeira and I said, wow, I really love that. It was fast, especially when they demonstrated, they called the scat. They demonstrated how to use capoeira as a fight, as a self-defense. I was so intrigued with it. I was so impressed by it. And mm. I said, no way. I have to do that kind of capoeira. I have to do that capoeira. I went back. This was a Sunday. I went back to Salvador. On Monday, I had class and I went to Mr. Bobo and said, I saw this capoeira, it was like this, like that. 
and was only one bidding bow and two pandeiras and said, that's Capoeira Regional now. I said, well, I already had all planned out. I said, I'm going looking for where they teach this because I want to come here on this day. I want to go next day. The other day, I want to come here and go there. Best Baba said, you better forget all about this because all you do this or you do the other. And I say, why not? I can do both. He said, well, this is so fresh in my mind. He said, pick up a piece of sugar cane right there. He, has to, he used to have this uh, sugar cane field right in the corner of his backyard. Actually, mm -hmm. not his backyard. The backyard of um, Contra Master Dilson was. Contra Master Dilson was, was Contra Master of Mess Bobo. The first mm -hmm. Contra Mess Bobo graduated. And since he lost his space, he used to bring, um, he started teaching at Mestre Dilson's mom, Dona Pureza's backyard. Mm -hmm. But it was known, was known uh, we didn't have, it was not covered up. Every time it rained, we couldn't train. And I never played, uh, prayed so much. Because every time in the morning, when I see the sky, the, the cloud getting thick. I say, oh no, it's kind of crowded. I used to pray so it wouldn't rain so I can have a capoeira training. And Mess Bobo used to have this sugar cane right there in Mestre Contra Mestre Dios. He said, if you can chew that sugar cane and by the same token, you can whistle at the same time, chew and whistle at the same time, you can practice both. Believe me, I was young and didn't you know any bed. I was maybe 14, 15. I hated Miss Bobo that day. I could, I mean, I asked for forgiveness up to today, but I, I told him this when I brought him to the United States. But I was really mad, really mad. And Miss Bobo said, Well, I guess I have to say goodbye to Capoeira Angola. And well, I had to leave. Because right there? Did you told him right there? Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry. Did you told that to him right there? Uh, when you, told that? you know, excuse me. Everyone, but guys, he is fine because everyone, uh, contra Mr. Chuvisco is saying that people saying it's, I uh, love you, Tati. My contra Mr. Uh, contra Mr. Skill is, uh, Chuvisco is saying that, hi, Serenos. Contra Mr. Skill is saying that it's, um, it's freezing the image, but he is fine. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Sometimes the image gets a little faded, but I can still hear you all the way through. Obrigado, Costinha. There's a lot of my students say they don't speak English, but they're stick, they're here. <laughs> There's a lot of people there. Mosse, you guys. Uh, mm? There's a lot of people there. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I was so mad, but I went to, I went to look for someone. If you know Bahia, I should take, nowadays you have three is one bus. But at that time, it used to be two bus to get to where Mr. Zike was hey. teaching. It was mm -hmm. very far, very far. And that was the only place. One day, I met Mr. Accordion, and I went to Mr. Accordion's class. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Accordion's class was in my, near my neighborhood, but very, my mother used to walk by. Mr. Accordion used to have a restaurant right behind his backyard. Uh -huh. of his mom's house but my mother used to really walk by all the time and one day i was there playing penny ball and i looked to the window my mother's walking across the street and say oh hell <laughs> holy <laughs> that i say i Can hate you hear more? And every time I, I didn't want to ask Master Cordeon, can we play the pinning ball on another spot? <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't do that because that, well, that's where the harder was. He used to draw the harder right there. Mr. Cordian was playing the beating. It was, well, he was teaching. And Mr. Bimba couldn't know that he was teaching. I was hiding from my mother and Mr. Cordian <laughs> hiding from Mr. Bimba. Mr. Bimba, you know, all Mr. Bimba students could not teach capoeira. Mr. Bimba didn't want anyone to teach capoeira. Uh, the Master Cordion was teaching there for a while already? He was teaching there for a while, but then Mess Zikio started coming. I say, Well, I, I think I'm going to start training with you, Master. No one called no one Master. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to start teaching, uh, start training with you. He said, We welcome. And Master 
accordion wheel. Well, at that time I was 15, Mr. Accordion was maybe 26. He was in the best shape ever. He was a terror of uh, that time in Bahia. He was an incredible couple. I've seen so many great things of Mr. Accordion. He, uh, Hold on, Mr. Your sound got a little low here. Let me see if I can fix it. Okay. I don't know why it got low. Okay, can you try again? Can you speak yeah. again? Can you hear me well? Not can very good. Well? So let me put my earplugs now. Um, okay, go ahead. Mestre Cordeon was incredible capoeirista. He also, he was and he is incredible, incredible musician. That's, all, that's why his nickname is Accordion because he plays so many different instruments. He, uh, but since I played berimbau, because berimbau, the instruments is really part of Capoeira Angola. I always say that 99.9% .9 of uh, students of Capoeira Angola, they all sing and play instruments because it's part of the class, it's part of the learning, you know. Uh, I never met very, well, few mestres from old time, but never met anyone from, this, from the Capoeira Angola that doesn't sing, that doesn't play the instrument. And regional, we have that we lack in that. You know, since mestre, I play berimbau because I was part of mestre Babo's class. Mestre, every day, we play the instrument, we, we, we practice singing, we practice the game. And uh, mestre Ezequiel, and I started learning Mestre Bimba's rhythm with Mestre Accordion. At that mm -hmm. time, he was play only Hedgeon. He only played three rhythm: Iuna, Banguela, and Somento Grande. But most of the time, Mestre Ezequiel always, Mestre Ezequiel, Mestre Accordion always plays Somento Grande. If he had tennis student, he would play all his tennis students and he would beat them out. <laughs> if he had 20 students, he would play all 20 and beat them all. If he had two, and uh, he never wanted to play the instrument and sing. Even so, he was a great singer. He's a great singer, great beating ball player. Mm -hmm. And I uh, really enjoyed. He continued being my mentor. mentor. And uh, if it was not for my mom, Master Cordeon would be my master today. I still consider him a master because he's much older than me, Capoeira, in age. You know, I was two capoeiristas from Mestre Bimba that I really, I mean, admire. Was many of them. Mestre Accordion was one of them. Mm -hmm. Mestre, nowadays they call Mestre, but that time was Camisa Rocha, who's no longer with us. They were incredible capoeiristas. Mestre Accordion for the courage and how he played such hard game and they would never get into a fight. He was just a rough player. Mm -hmm. And Mestre and uh, Camisa Rocha, Mestre Camisa Rocha was for, he was such an incredible takedown. He used to take people down in the blink of the eye. He mm -hmm. incredible. I mean, he was incredible. I was very impressed at how easy he would take people down. You know, and a lot of people who... Were, were they playing Capoeira together at the same time, Mestre? Camisa who? Rocha and Mestre Corjon, they were the same generation? Oh, yes. They still go after each other, but it was a really good match. And they respect each other because he was good. Mestre Tapan was really... For me, the most technical student that I've seen was Mestre Tapan, Mestre Sassi, um, Cascavel, who's no longer with us. Who else? Well, some names that they were just rough. Ahito, Brabo, uh, Mestre Canhão, who's all sticks in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. so, many, so many names, so many names. And uh, I used to go to many times to Mestre Bimba's hall on Sunday. Like I said yesterday or Thursday, if we ask this generation, how many hodas do you know? In Capoeira, mm -hmm. in Bahia, that time, everyone say, oh, Mess Valdemar. No, we have so many hodas, so many hodas on Sunday. This is my opinion. This is my, what I said. That's my opinion. That's mm -hmm. how I see it. Mess Valdemar was perfect scenery for the poverty, for the culture, how people gather, you know, 
and uh, the whole high society, like uh, George Amado and the intellectuals, Mario Cravo, Caribe, many others to come and inspire on Mass World. Very little, they used to go to Mass Pastinha, that was really incredible. Harder. Mass mm. Pastinha was in Pilorinho. Pilorinho always was a, a place that always attracted tourists. Mm -hmm. The tourists always to go to Mes Pastinha, but it was not that Mes Pastinha played a special capoeira for the tourists. No, he played capoeira just the way it used to be. But since it was more convenient for the tourists, they used to go there, you know, Pilori. Up to today, Pilori is still it is a um, place for tourists, mm -hmm. very much. Uh, uh, it's a better place because that time was used to be really dangerous. It's like Times Square in the 70s, mm -hmm. the 80s, everyone used to complain about Times Square, but everyone goes to Times Square. In Pilorino, mm -hmm. everyone complains about Pilorino. Everyone gets mad in the blink of the eye, but people always go to Pilorino because that's where Bahia Salvador started. That's mm -hmm. where history starts, right in mm -hmm. Pilorino. Went from Porto Seguro to Salvador, and Pilorino was the first place. Salvador really started building. Mm. Pilori used to be Salvador. And uh, but it was many, many, many other hardest. Which other hardest were, were good? It had Mes Pacino, Mes Valdemar, which was some of the other hardest that were Oh, nice. but some incredible, they are incredible hardest. Incre Actually, we are talking about uh, Mercado Modelo Roda. It used to be another market they used to call Mercado do Ouro. Gold market. Yeah, Mercado Ouro. It's old. Oh, this uh, I'm talking about in the 20s, the 30s, and I have this uh, document written by this uh, and photographed by this uh, British writer. I remember his, his first name, Adam something. I have on my storage. He mm -hmm. talks about this how in 20s, Mr. Bimba was, Mr. Bimba started working on Capo Regional 1919. And he talks mm -hmm. about the Roda around that time. And he talks about Capurisa, never heard about it. One Capurisa, he talks about Noronha. Mm. You know, Noronha is older than Master Bimba. Mm. Uh, he talks about Noronha, but many Capuris that no one talks about is Mercado do Ouro. Mercado do Ouro doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it just was nowadays. Uh, then Mercado Modelo, Mercado Ouro, Mercado Modelo replaced Mercado do Ouro. Mm -hmm. Mercado do Ouro used to be where all the boats, the big uh, boats used to come and bring foods to, uh, to, what you sell, to um, spread through Salvador. To the ports and then spread to, to Yeah, the and uh, Mercado do Ouro was closed and they opened Mercado Modelo. Mercado Modelo really starts in the 30s and the 40s. Mm. That's where they also used to have a great hard and great Capuris used to come from the island, from the Reconcavo, Reconcavo, no? mm -hmm. and uh, used to meet, meet and have match with the Capuris from Salvador. But there's many, many, many other hard Mexico, every Messi, actually, because every neighborhood in Salvador, or most of the neighborhood in Salvador, they used to have uh, their own hoda. Every mm -hmm. neighborhood used to have a mestre, who was mm -hmm. the mentor of the young people of that neighborhood. Because actually, who graduate a mestre? The community, you know. And this uh, Mexican Jiquinha used to have a hoda. Mestre mm -hmm. Gato. Nowadays, everyone gave nickname, no nickname, gives a last name to many capoeiristas. They call... Uh, Gato Preto. Gato Preto. Gato Preto is, is part of this generation now. It's called like Vermelho 27, Vermelho 27. Always was Vermelho, never 27, never 27. Mess, Mess. Eu tenho, uh, do you have two questions here. One that Messi Batata made a while. If Messi Camisa Rocha had a different nickname on that time, he played at Messi Bimba's studio? No. And... Oh, it used to be Camisa Rocha, uh, 
camisa, camisinha Rose de Lira of Abadá, and camiseta, the young one, was from four brothers, four. And that was like that since uh, the beginning. Yes, the mother of the fact, camisa, camisa, who is his uh, agronomist, his top capoeira, he also used to be incredible capoeirista. He won, we competed together. Mesa Zikiel uh, did a capoeira tournament. And I was vice Bahia champion. I was a vice champion and he yeah. was a champion of Bahia. It was a state. This champion, this uh, tournament lasts for a month because people came from everywhere in South in Bahia oh, wow. to compete. And I, oh, I got the final. And the Camisa won. Camisa, oh. the one who don't play Capoeira anymore, has four brothers. Camisa Roche. And Camisa Roche, because he always wearing a Camisa uh, a purple shirt. shirt. Yes. <laughs> and then they call, when his brother came, they call Camisa. When Camisinha, who everyone call him Camisa, was the leader, the master of a Capoeira Bada, they start calling him Camisinha. Then Camiseta, the youngest one, you know, they all, mm -hmm. except, except Camis, uh, they all, uh, all three of them passed through Master Bimba, except Camiseta. Camiseta mostly learned from uh, Camisinha. Yeah. I remember him, I know him since he was five years old. Camisinha, the leader, Master Camisa nowadays, we know each other. He's one year younger. We know each other since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Messi, yeah. uh, we're gonna. I think we're gonna have to make that little one-hour break. Come back for a little bit more, uh, sure. and and then you can tell what the plan is to finish the interview. If we're gonna make it in two parts, if we're gonna try to keep. Well, we can make it if it's let's not stretch or make too long. But we can make it in two parts next Saturday. We can do it again. You know, I think it's too long for. We've been for talking. Wow, it's almost one hour. We've been talking. Yeah. So let's make a five minutes break so it doesn't fall on everybody's face. Make sure uh, you're break. saying Portuguese so people understand. Yeah. Galera, a gente vai fazer um breakzinho de cinco minutos, porque vai acabar agora a primeira hora. E a gente vai voltar para fazer mais um pouco, mas acho que a gente vai fazer a entrevista em duas partes. Vamos terminar mais uma parte agora e uma outra parte no final de semana que vem, para não ficar muito longo. Mas a gente vai voltar já já. Cinco minutinhos de break. Pega um cafezinho. Oi. Make sure if anyone has. A question in Portuguese, they can ask, and uh, how we can ask. I, I can um, answer in, in English and in Portuguese. Yeah. So send your messages here. I can read some of them. Mande as mensagens aqui com as perguntas. Eu posso ler algumas delas. Eu vi a pergunta da Tatiana. I saw Tatiana's question, and we're gonna talk about it when he goes out of Brazil. Tati. Do you have Do you have time to talk and answer contra mes Tatiana? We have three minutes before it breaks. Three minutes. Yeah, she yeah. asked, when was your first trip outside of Brazil? Which year was your first trip outside of Brazil? Just after Mestre Bimba died in February 1974, and I left Brazil. Uh, eu saí do Brasil, Mestre Bimba faleceu em fevereiro uh, de 74, e eu saí do Brasil em uh, fevereiro, ou oh, abril de 74. Mas se bimba faleceu em 74 e eu saí em 74. Uhum. Eu faleci em fevereiro e eu saí em abril. Mas se bimba passed away em fevereiro, I think it was 5th of February, if I recall, uhum. 1974, and I left Brazil April 1974. Ok, let's make a quick break and we're going to come back to talk about Mestre Ezequiel's class, how it was with him, how was his studio, and a few information. A gente vai fazer um break rapidinho, estamos voltando já. Para mais um pouco, a gente vai falar sobre o mestre Ezequiel e as aulas é na academia dele. Abraço. Voltamos back, já. Galera. Já volto.